Assalamu alaikum. Um, my name is Omar Arsala. Here's um, Ismail Ahmadzai. Uh, so inshallah, you know, tonight we're going to just share, you know, our trip where, that we, we had through the IJRI route. And before we start the, the presentation, actually we're going to play a video first. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad An Nabi al-Ummi wa ala alihi wa sallim Jack, look at the door, you got to do this I saw you coming this way and you look tired, I need do you need coffee? Do you need tea? Do you need anything like this? So he said, I turn around, I came back. MashaAllah, brother here is almost done. And we have Ismail here, and we have Hussein here. MashaAllah, holding it down right there, MashaAllah. Allahu Akbar. La ilaha So uh, we've been invited, I mean there's almost nothing out here, this is some of the most desolate region and territory, but uh, we've just been invited to come into this one home farm. But yesterday, it's the pass between two mountains, but when it's small. So the Thani is the mountain pass between two mountains, but it's small. And Wada is the area. So the Prophet was coming through the area called Thani to Wada. It's next to Quba. So we're going to pass through it. And this is where they met him. And this is where they sang Talal Bihra Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad you know, first of all, I just want to make a quick, quick disclosure that neither myself or Brother Smile, none of us are public speakers, and most of you probably don't even know us. And the reason I know you guys are all here is not to hear us, um, but it's, I, you know, it's really, it's the... Um, of the love for the Prophet you know, um, and you know, when you love somebody, you want to hear any small little detail about them, right? And, I, and I, I'm sure you guys all, you know, want to hear about that trip that the Prophet took when he had to escape from Mecca to Medina uh, with Abu Bakr, and, and, you know, and, and, and that was, you know, this trip for us also was really, I would say it was a, uh, a trip of love, you know, you know, because we wanted to follow that footstep of the Prophet that traveled, you know, um, almost 300 miles from Mecca to Medina, uh, and you know, and like Imam Dawood said, um, um, he was one of uh, one of uh, the our basically group leaders that went with us. He said, you know, this trip, you know, like for us. We learn Islam, um, you know, theoretically through books and everything. And this trip was more of an experiential uh, Islam for us. You know, you were just actually experiencing what the Prophet Islam experienced. So that was really, I think, this trip for us. You know, like I said, it was a trip of love and, and, and a trip of, you know, us really experiencing what he went through. Uh, so, you know, alhamdulillah, it was, you know, it was an incredible experience for us. 
Uh, and that's what we're gonna try to do is just share some of that experience with you guys tonight. Uh, because, you know, if you think about it, you know, there's um, so many trails that are out there, if you guys know, like John Muir Trail, and there's even, if you know, there's a Michelle Obama Trail that people follow, these trails, that they walk these trails. And so, well, this trail is the most probably, no, it is, not probably, it is the most important trail that anyone has traveled in human history, let alone Islamic history, because we know as Muslims what it did in, in, in changing the history of Islam, and none of us here today would probably be Muslim if it wasn't for the Prophet Islam going through this Israel route and, you know, and, and starting Medina and, you know, and everything that you know, the history that happened after this Israel route. So it's, a, it's an incredible route that us as Muslims are, are not experiencing it. And, you know, for us to experience it, you know, Smile and myself, and we've, we've gone to Humrah before, we've gone to Hajj before, and every other trip around the world. And this trip is like something else that we'll probably never forget for the rest of our lives. Um, so that's kind of like our intention, inshallah, is that to just share that and encourage uh, our community and more people um, to go through this route. Because like I said, it's a, it's a life-changing experience. Um, so it was basically for us, it was a 12-day trip. So we'll just go through kind of day by day and, and again, share some of that experiences with you, inshallah. Um, so as we started this trip, day one, basically, you know, as you all know this story, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi you know, and that's another thing was this trip, you know, for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was miraculous for him and miracles started happening to him as soon as he even left his house, right? As you guys know the story of that, when as soon as he was, he was about to leave his house, a group of Quraysh young men came all and surrounded his house and they're there about to kill him, right? And Ali Radhi sleeps in his bed instead and he walks out and as he walks out, like I said, there's like 10 or 12 of these young Quraysh men all ready to kill him. But he recites Surah Yasin and you know, throws some dirt on him and all of these young men fall asleep. So, even that before this, as soon as this trip starts, as soon as he leaves his house, subhanAllah, he knows that Allah is with him and Allah is going to help him. But he's still taking all the means and, you know, dunya means and he's going to go through this route and going to struggle. Um, so he leaves the house and, you know, the, the Quraysh fall asleep. Basically, the, these young men and he's able to walk through them and they, they don't see him. And he goes to Abu Bakr's house and from there, uh, he takes Abu Bakr and, and SubhanAllah and Abu Bakr himself, I mean, you know, um, Aisha Raninu, Raninu, you know, um, when talks about this moment, when Abu Bakr finds out that he's going to be accompanying the Prophet Sallam, she said that he wept like he had never seen him wept before, I mean, like a little baby. You know, it wasn't weeping that, oh, uh, he's afraid of going, no, it was a is a weeping of joy that I'm going to be accompanying the Prophet Sallallahu you know, through this trip. And um, so he was so happy, even though their lives was in danger where the Quraysh set a bounty of uh, like a hundred camels, which is equivalent to a hundred Lamborghinis. It was like a hundred, not just regular camels, it was like one of those, those red camels, which is like the most expensive camels. So it said, if anybody gets in, Alive or dead, we're going to give you a hundred camels. So they set a bounty on him, on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So even though there was a bounty for them, still the Abu Bakr was so happy that he was going to be accompanying the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to this trip. So in this trip, like I said, so we just kind of followed the same route that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took. So day one, the first thing we did was, again, we just went from where, in the you know, Prophet Sallallahu house, Abu Bakr's house, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the normal route would have been is to go immediately to north. But he actually went south, so to kind of deceive the Quraysh. Again, even though he knew that Allah is protecting him, he was still taking all the precautions to make sure that, you know, he's safe. And um, in terms of the worldly precautions, he was taking everything possible and he was planning everything to the smallest details. And again, that's for teaching us a lesson as well too, that you want to take you know, all of the worldly uh, precautions, 
But know that Allah is still there and you leave the results to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so for us, as we're experiencing all of this, right, and as we're going through this, we're learning all of this as well too, that the Prophet actually went south. So he went south towards Jabal Tar, which is a mountain. Uh, it's about three miles from Kaaba. Uh, uh, so we walked about three miles there and then we walked up. And subhanAllah, just, you, you know, you can see us there hiking up to, um, uh, to Jabal Tawr. It was a really, you know, it was a strenuous hike, hiking up to this mountain. Uh, but, you know, and um, Alhamdulillah, we made it to the top. And we made it to the top. This, this, uh, this is the cave that you, we all have heard, you know, the story of the spider and the pigeon, you know, um, you know laying the egg and everything. So this is the cave that he actually puts us on hidden. So hopefully, let me see if I can play the video of the actual cave. And another thing, again, when he was there at the cave, look at another uh, strategic reason why he was in this mountain. When you're at the top of the mountain, look, you can get a view of entire Kaaba. You can see that's the clock tower right there. So he can, when he's out there, you know, at night especially, he can see if there's anybody coming, because if anybody coming at night, there'll be, you know, a fire and light and stuff, whatever. So he can, or he can see him ahead of time, oh, there's a group coming towards us. So he, even though he's hiding on top of the mountain, he can still view the whole area in front of them if there's anybody from Mecca coming to get them. So let's play, inshallah, this video. Hopefully it works. There we go. So this is that. That's the cave right there. Cave. And they stayed inside. A lot of thaw. So, when they started this evolution, that's it right there. Ya Rasulullah, if they just look down at their feet, they will see us. La taqaf. Inna Allah ma'ana. So that was the cave, you know, subhanAllah, you know, just, like I said, I mean, think about it, the tracker's coming all the way up to the top. It's like, it's a, it's a long, it's a, a strenuous hike. You come all the way to the top, but the last second that, you know, the one more second to go look down, they didn't do it. And again, that's just a miracle of Allah protecting them. Um, so that was our day one hiking up to Mount Taur. And so on, the next day when we started, um, this sign is just, I really like the sign, you know, just, um, you know, I just take a picture there. It just, you know, it just says, have a safe journey and Allah reward you for your trip and all that. So it was nice just, just seeing a sign like that. So we just took a sign there, picture there. And, and then so again, when we were starting, so this is the group. Um, that was uh, went with us. So and again, in Subhanallah, um, everyone, you know, different background. Um, again, you see Brother Smile there on the left, uh, and uh, we got Brother Abdullah Hussain. He's actually ex uh, NFL player that he played for Kansas City Chiefs and several NFL teams. And then you got Imam Dawood Yasin, um, and Brother Emal was a cousin of mine from Southern California. He's a you know life coach. Uh, Brad Mushtaba, uh, which actually, you know, you can see he's the only one that has tongs, and he actually was not able to join us in the beginning because before starting the journey, he was going to the Kaaba, he was in Tob, he tried to jump over a barrier and actually then he got into accident, he fell down and he hurt his ankle. So he wasn't actually able to join us at the beginning, he came, came back like on the fifth day or sixth day, he came and joined us. Um, and then that's me right there. So it was actually a total of six of us that, you know, took this journey. And then, you know, and, and the first day, we actually walked 22 miles. And when we first started, and, and unfortunately, the route is not like you design, you know, like a regular route that you would see and hiking paths here with everything is you got signs and, you know, the, you know, really marked trails and everything like that. The thing that helped us is that Sheikh Abdullah Qadi actually, um, he wrote this book, um, you know, uh, Mecca to Medina. Uh, mashallah, he, for like 15, 20 years, he's documented this entire route. And um, 
So he's got the entire route on GPS. So you can actually, as long as you have that GPS with you, you can walk the exact route. And that's what we had. We had a GPS app that we can walk the exact route that the process I'm walking. Um, so basically, we used his route that he gave us. Um, and so that really helped us. And because like you see, you can see there's certain sections, unfortunately, um, that we had to go under like this railroad tracks. And this is like, um, only maybe four feet high, so we had to crawl down. And actually here, as we were crawling down, I ruined my backpack day one <laughs> because it was like scraping on top of the you know, ceiling of the, uh, you know, the tunnel here. Uh, so there's, we had to go through, and like I said, it's not, and, and that's another reason I, you know, it's like um, we really want to encourage more Muslims to go this route, so because actually the Saudi government, uh, I talked to Sheikh Abdullah Qadi just recently, he said the Saudi government is going to make some improvements. They are going to try to make this an official out. So the more Muslims go, the more people use it, they're going to get encouraged because the Saudi government, they want to encourage tourism and people going to Saudi Arabia. So this, I think more Muslims go there and, and reviving this sunnah, this incredible sunnah, uh, it's going to help so that these routes become more official and not just you know, something that you have to have just GPS and have to walk through these tunnels and through, you can see we were walking here day one next to the freeway. So this is like just, again, some pictures. And, and that's another thing, subhanAllah, that as we're going through this route, um, a lot of different sceneries that we went through. Um, and the first thing you see is that you, green grass that we're walking. And that's, uh, you know, one of the signs of the end of time that Prophet said that, the, you know, the, the valleys and the hills of Mecca and Medina are gonna become green. And as we walked through most of this route, there was a lot of greenery that was just really surprising. So another amazing thing is, as we go, we walk through, you know, as we're walking next to the freeway and everything, and that really surprised us is the people. You know, we know what, in a, you put the government, the politics aside, uh, but the people, subhanAllah, is amazing. It's like, everywhere we go, like this brother, he stopped us like three times. Every time, the first time he comes, you want something, water, drink, juice, something, can I get you something, alhamdulillah, we're good. Then he comes back, a few minutes later, he brings us a bunch of juice and water and candy and whatever, he says, okay, alhamdulillah, he goes and he leaves. And then later on, we're down there, like, and then I can't, like we get to this gas station and some stores are there, we see him again, hey, so I'm like, what's going on? Oh, come on, well, okay, I, I, can I get you something? And mashallah, he treated us for some like smoothies and things like that, so they like, just play a little bit of him, you know. So, you know, and it's like, like him, there was, you know, one brother, like at 11 o'clock at night, he stops at, and we're, we're setting camp and everything. We just set up camp and everything. He comes and says, you know, talks to us. What are you doing? Hey, you got, oh, so, okay. And he goes back, comes back a few minutes later. He milks his camel and brings us camel milk, 11 o'clock at night. Um, so then, and then next day, this is day three as we start. And I get some videos we can play there too. So this is... Uh, Brother Hussain Abdullah giving adhan early in the morning. And also, we, we try to start early as possible uh, so that we leave, try to leave by Fajr or even sometimes before Fajr so that, you know, you miss the heat and then you don't have to walk as much in the, in the heat of the day. And then, like, you know, as we're saying, like, we're going through different obstacles. His brother smiled crawling under a fence. <laughs> That's Imam Dawood, mashallah, going under the fence. Be careful with that. The, you know, the first day, especially day one and two, we were a lot next to the road, and finally, I think this is where we actually go now go towards the desert. That's again Imam Dawood. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So now we are 
on day two of our track, really day three. Um, you see behind me, there's some trucks over here. There's a road here. But we're headed up into those mountains right there. That is where we are headed because now the truck will move off-road completely. Um, the vehicle that is supporting us, bringing us water and some food, will need to navigate those mountains up ahead of us um, pretty much from here until we make it to Mashitpuva in Medina. So that's the plan. I will have some reflections. Day one is grueling. Um, I could really put it on the bottom of us. Um, and then uh, I'll share some other yeah, so just reflections and thoughts. Going through some other things. So that way. Okay. So that was the three so then then we start day four uh we stopped there was a, a gas station there was a masjid there before we started the day we got some basically some snacks and some nuts and things like that and this is where then we actually now again go more deep into the desert and i think we also have some videos of there too and we go through some uh, herd of camels here <laughs> Oh man, this leg was stuck. Oh, See the leg is yeah. stuck in there. Salam alaikum. Salam, we got Zabal Khayyam. It was so, such a blessing to have Imam Dawood with us, mashallah, because not that he spoke Arabic, but I, I think that's one thing I would encourage is if you do go in this route, definitely take somebody that's a scholar, somebody that's knowledgeable, because as you go through every section, they can really tell you stories and explain sections and places. So that was amazing also to have really Imam Dawood with us. And there's certain parts, you know, I know this is a large group, but I'll experience some of the things that we experienced spiritually that was just, I would say that was definitely a miracle. Uh, so maybe we can share that as well. So let me see. Yeah, here's some more desert. So that's another amazing thing, Samana, that it's like when you go through this route, and you know, the simplest things becomes, you know, you value it so much, just the shade of the tree. Oh, I mean, we just, I mean, subhanAllah, that just felt so good when you find a tree and just rest under the shade. Uh, or just some cold water or something. You get some cold water somewhere, it's just, oh my God, that tasted so good. So that was day four. Um, there's right here, actually, we had, you know, we were resting under a tree here, so that was like amazing. Um, so day five. Um, and actually, um, so day five, um, this is several things, amazing things happen with the Prophet Sallallahu um, uh, And first thing, if you look at history, the first 13 years of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, maybe about 280 people in Mecca became Muslim, maximum 300 people. Now, just through this Ijra route, uh, you know, over 300 people became Muslim. And that's amazing. You know, like for 1300 years, the Prophet was preaching and only made maximum about 280, 300 people became Muslim. But just through this route, over 300 people. So the first group that became Muslim this route is just when he got to this section here, is um, be, um, he met this one tribe and their leader. And the Prophet impressed this tribal leader so much that subhanAllah, he became Muslim, not only him became Muslim, but his entire tribe became Muslim. And they said it was like, I don't know, like 80 tenths or something, which you multiply that times four, it's like 320 people. So subhanAllah, 
just through this one trip as you took, you know, that, again, it's teaching us lessons, right? It's like when you go on the route of Prophet you make Ijra, Allah makes things happen. And SubhanAllah, just this Hijri route already started, more people became Muslim than his 13 years when he was staying in put in, in Mecca. So it's giving him openings. Um, and then the other thing that happened here is after that, the Prophet uh, and Abu Bakr and their guide were really, really um, thirsty and hungry and they um, didn't have any food and water. So they got to this um, tent and they saw there was just one tent and they went closer and it looked like there was one lady there. And you know, they had some old goats and stuff and said to them, you know, Prophet I'm asked, you know, do you have any of these goats that could give any milk for us? And the, the lady said, look, we were going through tough times. We don't really have any goat. The only thing I have is this old goat that, the old goat that's, um, doesn't give any milk or anything. But if you want, go try it, see. But this is an old goat, doesn't have any milk or anything. He said, no, it's okay, just bring it to me. And so Umabat brings this goat to the Prophet Sallallahu and Prophet Sallallahu recites a dua and puts his hand, his blessed hand on it. As soon as he does that, the goat's uterus starts giving milk. So it gave so much milk that not only the Prophet Abu Bakr and their guide drank in full, but also Mabat drank and, and it was incredible. Um, and, and, and then so then the Prophet you know, leaves. Uh, when he leaves then, sometime later, our husband comes back. And our husband says, who is here? And then Umabba describes the Prophet And her description of the Prophet is an amazing description that is one of the most beautiful descriptions of the Prophet ever um, given. So I'm gonna, you probably need somebody more eloquent to read this, but I'll try my best to read it to you, her description of the Prophet And I would just close your eyes and just listen to the description of Umabat about the Prophet And again, like I said, you need somebody else that's more eloquent that should read it, but I'll, again, I'll, um, I don't know, smile, you wanna read it? You sure? Okay. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I saw a man with <clears throat> visible beauty and cleanliness. His face is luminous. He is well built, neither blemished by a large belly nor a small head. He is handsome and well proportioned. His eyes are deep, black, and his eyelashes are long. And his voice is natural echo. And his neck is elegantly long. And his beard is full and thick. The white of his eyes are extremely white, and the black of his eyes are extremely black. It is as his eyes are lined naturally with coal. His eyebrows are arched and perfectly spaced closely. His hair is dark black. When, it is, when he is silent, dignity covers him. When he speaks, he, his speech is audible, clear, almost commanding. He is the most striking in appearance seen from afar and the most handsome viewed up closely. His speech is sweet, so clear and easy to understand. He gets to the point without speaking too long or too brief. His words flow in order like stung beads falling smoothly one after another on a necklace. Uh, he has medium height, such that you do not have to strain to look up him, uh, to, at him or be troubled to look down at him. A branch between two branches. He is the most radiant of the, of the tree and the most respected. His companion, companions surround him to, uh, to protect and serve when he speaks. They listen attentively to his words. And if he commands, he compete to fulfill his command. He is well served and attended. He neither frowns nor nags. So, subhanAllah, an incredible you know, description of the Prophet Sallam that she gave. And after she gave this description, 
and he, you know, her husband had, had kind of heard about him as well too. He follows the Prophet and catches up to, uh, to him. And he also becomes Muslim. Um, uh, and then also at uh, this section is um, also the Jufa Miqat point. That's where one of the Miqat points where the, uh, you know, the Hajis come and, you know, change their haram. Uh, and then also at this section, uh, there was an ayah that was revealed as well too. And, 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 and also this is the point where the, you know, like the Prophet ﷺ is like feeling sad that he's leaving his hometown and everything. And Allah kind of comforts him by sending an ayah at this point as well too. Um, and then so as soon as he leaves this section, um, you know, then Saraka comes. And maybe I think, Smile, you can give the story of Saraka, mashallah. Yeah. Normally when you hear a story of Saraka, they say, you know, he was a bounty hunter and um, he knew where the Prophet ﷺ is because he heard some news from somebody that he knew that they saw Rasulullah and his companions were west, were the um, Jeddah basically. Because what they did, instead of going north, they went south, then they went west, then they followed that route back north. So he knew, so what he did, he didn't tell anybody because he wanted all the money for himself. So what he did, he got on the horse, left and followed the same route. So basically he caught up, he caught up to Rasulullah and um, when they, when he approached Rasulullah so he had a spear and um, basically he wanted to, because that all life, he, wants, he wanted the, um, Rasulullah to, to get Rasulullah and get the reward money. So what happened, you know, this area normally when you hear, you know, the horses, uh, the two front legs, when he tried to attack Rasulullah it went in, in the ground, actually sinked in. You know, I used to hear that story and I seen it was sand probably, you know, that's where the horse went and he fell. But in this area, it's not sand, it's hard ground, you know, like it's rocks and, you know, and that's a miracle. You know, he tried to attack Rasulullah the horse, you know, the two legs, it sank into the ground and he fell. And he realizes, you know, like he tries this like three times. Then he realizes, you know, that Rasulullah is protected. You know, he, instead of, you know, he, he came to, after Rasulullah he actually asks Rasulullah for protection. Because he realized, you know, that, you know, I can't get to him. So, you know, in, in Rasulullah Sassim, it's granted, protection grant, granted to you. And he actually says, you know, give me that in writing, you know. So, subhanAllah, you know, like uh, later on, in the, during the Umar radiallahu anhu khulafa, so what he did, you know, like, you know, like Rasulullah Sassim told him, you know, uh, not only this, that you know that um, you got protection, but you know, one day you will be where wearing the, you know, the bracelets of uh, Qaisar, the, the king of uh, Persia back then, you know, that, um, uh, in, so in the, during the Umar al time, you know, when he, he took out that contract, he said, Rasulullah told me that, you know, that you, when, when they got the booty from, um, from, the, from uh, Persia, he says, you know, that Rasulullah promised me that I'm going to be putting that on. So Rasulullah, Umar al who allowed him, you know, uh, to put that on. So for, for us, you know, subhanAllah, you, know, you see that, you know, what, what really hit me is uh, that story, you know, you, you see the miracle of Rasulullah you know, that, you know, it actually wasn't a soft ground. But Alhamdulillah, like that, you know, it's, um, it's, um, it's amazing when you're there and you see it. You know, it's one thing you hear stories, but when you experience it and you see it, it's, it's a different feeling. It's a life-changing experience. Um, and I, I'll let Umar okay. follow, inshallah. Okay, exactly. So, you know, another thing is like this entire trip, we had so many possibilities of canceling because, you know, we didn't know, for example, initially we had a driver that was going to be with us for the entire trip. Just before we get there, the driver cancels and says, I'm not going to be able to go. So the other guy that was arranging, this brother right here, he was, um, 
arranging the trip for us. He said, you know, my driver canceled, so, but I have another group that I'm actually taking four days later from you guys. So you know what? I can stay with you guys the first four days, three or four days, but then I gotta leave you guys. I can't bring you food and water or any of your stuff. And by that time, hopefully I'm gonna get you another driver. So we didn't know like by day five if we we're gonna have another driver or not. But subhanAllah, you know, and Allah, you know, it's like we had trust in Allah and said, look, the Prophet took this trip. He had so many uncertainties, right? We have, a, you know, alhamdulillah, at least we have driving for the first four days and we got the tents and nice, you know, you see those tents. The Prophet didn't have these nice tents and sleeping bags and the nice boots that we have. And he was on with probably just his slippers. And we had so much more luxury you know, compared to the Prophet So, you know, and so we just, we did tawakkal to Allah and we went. And so, but alhamdulillah, day five, we did get another driver and we got an amazing driver, subhanAllah. The driver that we did get, he was, mashallah, incredible. He first comes and says, well, I'm here to serve you. Another thing, he is actually, he works at the Majid Nabawi. So he's a servant of the Prophet he works at the Masjid Nabawi and he gives even Hadan at the local Masjid at the Medina as well too. So he's a Mahadin in Medina and he's a servant and he works at the Masjid Nabawi. And he comes to serve us, subhanAllah. And it was amazing. Um, so again, so now day six, uh, we start going now east. We went first, like Brother Smile said, we, they went, we went south, we went west, then we went north. Now we're got adjusting our track going back more east to get back to the track towards uh, Medina. We're about halfway point. And again, so many amazing things happen uh, and, and, uh, through this trip. Another thing here is like you can see here, another uh, you know, brother stops us and says, what are you doing? And then like, I don't know, like two hours later, again, somehow he finds us. Oh yeah, oh, I found you, good, good, good. Here we have, a, there, there's a, like an oasis here or like a garden actually, there's a garden, come here, have lunch with us. <laughs> so that's the, there we're having lunch with them in this garden, subhanAllah. Uh, and then here we actually, you know, people are always talking, oh, you see snakes and scorpions, things like that. So yeah, we, yeah, we saw a snake too on the road. So sure you guys, there's a picture of a snake, so something exciting. <laughs> So we got, we got a, a video of a snake too. You see, the head is a little bit rectangular. Uh, so, that's a poisonous. So that's a snake too, alhamdulillah. There's uh, some more. Us hiking. I mean, this is all desert, but you can see now you can uh, green on the sides. Came out of the Valley of Qudayr yesterday, as he said, he went to Juhfa, which is the main part for the Ihram, and then we um, headed out this morning before Fajr, we prayed Fajr on the road, you see over by that castle there was a different, uh, different, um, someone has captured that, but, um, yeah, we're on the, we're headed to a, a road right now. Okay. We go on that road for about five or six miles. Uh, we've been heading east now this morning, and we're about to head north now. And this is it. This is the this is the to Masjid Quba from here. We're going to enter into this valley on the other side of us. You're going to catch this right now. Right there is the way forward, but we're going to enter into this and then get deep inside of this mountain pass. And pretty much stay between these two mountains until we make it to to Quba. So that's it. I just thought it was an important point because now we're moving from east. As I said, the Prophet Islam went south, went west, he went north, he went east, and now he's going back north. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on that final uh, run for these next five days that we'll have uh, on our way up to, uh, or actually, yeah, next five days. Uh, six days on our way back up to 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 Medina. Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, um, so this is um, 
actually the brother he actually that our driver that, that, that you know the new driver so when we finish day six he, he takes us to this subhanallah and, and so it was just desert but it was so beautiful and like i said it was a desert oasis it was like only one tree there but it was just like i said i mean the pictures doesn't do it justice it was just so beautiful and he set up this camp for us he brought these rugs and then he had the most delicious days filled with pistachios and so many different things and set up tea for us. And again, like, <laughs> we didn't expect any of this, but, you know, subhanAllah, and it's like I said, he's a servant of, of the Prophet Sallam, a servant of Majal Nabawi, and he's here, he says, look, I'm here to serve you guys. Do whatever you, I, we need, I, I'm here for you guys. And he was like, subhanAllah, treating us like a king, and it's, like I said, in the middle, middle of the desert, and he said he have, he's having that set up for us. And... Um, so he even built a fire for us too, mashallah. Okay. Hello, what? No. Yatra than Namuth. Hey, he said there's three benefits right now. First one, it repels the mosquitoes. Danny? So he's giving benefits yeah, of fire. Hasharat al... Hasharat al... Hey, if there are um, uh, like anything wild, animals, yeah, they, they, they'll see the fire and they, run, they, and they go away. They Oh, hasharat, sorry, not hasharat, it's like, um, like the bugs, type bugs, of the bugs right and right stuff, yeah. Inshallah, so. Oh, and uh, I don't know if we recorded, I have it, but he, he gave adhan, he gave such a beautiful adhan, mashallah. Yeah, I don't have his adhan. Um, so then, 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 this is day seven. Again, you know, it's like, as we going through the, the route, um, you know, it's, it's different sceneries. We are, you know, like our imagination was either like maybe mostly by next to the road or mo mostly maybe desert, but it's like different sceneries. So we had, like I said, we had to go through the road, we had desert, and you can see here going through valleys. Uh, and then even here, there's some body of water there. And, and, and um, you know, Saudi Arabia naturally doesn't have any lakes or rivers. But here, because of, it was after a rainstorm, there was like some pond that was, you know, kind of like a lake that was created. I guess just for us that we can experience it, mashallah. <laughs> so alhamdulillah. So we've been experienced a lake in Saudi Arabia. You say, what, a lake in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, alhamdulillah, we saw a lake in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> so just... And then um, another amazing thing here was, um, if you see next to the road, people set up like box water stations. Now this isn't all of the places, but this is one of the improvements that we suggested to uh, Sheikh Abdullah Qadi is that if we can have like um, this type of water station, maybe every 20 miles, then you don't even need like a driver because that's the most important thing is water. Like right? you're going in the desert and there's no place that you can even filter water. Um, so if there was like uh, watering station like this every 20 miles, then you can just backpack and you don't need even a car to support you. So let's see. Again, I think it's 820, so maybe we'll take a break right now. So right now we're on day seven. Uh, so we covered the first six days, six and a half days, and now again we're in the day seven. Um, again, like I said, as we are walking through this route, the scenery keeps on changing and we're getting closer to Medina and you're seeing more bigger mountains. Uh, and also lava tracks. So I think this video here will show uh, where we're walking on top of some of these lava tracks and getting closer to the mountains. It's just again a little bit of view of the the scenery there. And one thing I would say is also, um, Subhanallah, everyone here and you know they had some pain. And Subhanallah, probably the Imam Dawood had probably the most pain because he had an injury, but he never complained one day. And one day, 
We were end of the hike. We he barely set up his tent. And as soon as he set up his tent, he, he, you know, it's like he didn't even put a sleeping bag or anything. He just went inside and dove in. And he just went to sleep. He didn't have dinner or anything. He was just so tired and, and, and hurting and everything. Um, but, you know, and everyone through, went through some kind of pain and, and challenges. But even with all of that, you know, it's like when you're in any trip and anything, and especially this trip, you know, you want to, your end point is you're going to get to Medina and where the process is, you want to get there. But this trip, you know, subhanAllah, we didn't want it to end because it's just every second, every moment, and every step that we were taking, we were taking, you know, the step of the process on because we knew he was taking. And some of these routes, as we were walking, it's like there's a mountain, we're in a valley, there's a mountain on this side, there's a mountain on this side, and maybe the path is like the width of this table. And you know that the Prophet walked through this uh, route. You know, and um, so like I said, it's like we didn't want this to end. And that was probably our saddest thing. Every, time, every minute we were thinking about it is, look, you know, this is going to end. This is going to end. And we didn't want it to end. Uh, even though we're all in pain, right? Everybody's in pain, and, you know, and, but we still didn't want, it, didn't want it to end because, like I said, it was an incredible experience as you're going through uh, this, uh, you know, walk and hike. Um, so this is day eight. Again, like I said, you know, we're getting more closer to Medina. You, you can see more, more of the lava tracks, uh, more of the mountainous areas. Um, so I think this one's a video, maybe we can play this. I think this is like we're resting here next to the road and we're, uh, I think, waiting for a uh, ride to come at the end of the day. And doing some dicker there. I mean, I'll, t I'll tell you one experience, Subhan, I know it's the, um, we were walking in a path like this, it was mostly desert, and then Imam Dawood tells us, let's do dhikr, and we're just saying, Allah, Allah, and we're walking, and we're not paying attention to time or anything, we're just walking, and our normal speed was maybe 2.2 miles per hour or something like that, and after a period of time, we're doing this dhikr, and then we, he stops us and he asks everybody, he says, how long do you think you've been walking? Well, said, maybe 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. And then um, we look at the time, it was actually actually 10 minutes. And what was more amazing too, was like I had a GPS that can track like our speed and rate. Our rate, we were walking, but like I said, 2.2, 2.3 miles per hour. During that time, our weight went up to 3.8 miles an hour. And his, his GPS doesn't lie, right? It's just, it was showing to it. I mean, it's, you know, um, and again, it was just, you know, uh, it's, it's a public thing, but I just wanted to share that look, subhanAllah. I mean, we believe in miracles and, and the Prophet you know, went, you know, experienced so many miracles that was so much greater, right? But even us going through this, <laughs> we experienced Subhana, I mean, to, to us it was like a miracle that Subhana, how did our rate just went up from 2.3 miles to 3.8 miles per hour in this minute period? Uh, so, like I said, we had amazing experiences, and it's, in a lot of these experiences, you can't really explain, you know, present and talk about it and all of this. You have to experience it. So, okay, let's see. So that was day eight. Um, and another, you know, again, everywhere we went, we made amazing people. And here we met some, you know, villagers there. They were, they were herding camels. And, you know, one of them said, do you want to ride a camel? So we got on a camel and we were able to ride their camel as well too. Took some pictures with them. And, you know, they're all, everywhere we went, they were very, you know, gracious and offered this stuff. And one guy, and actually, he had a, one of those old flip cell phones. He said, you want money? You want my phone? Here, have my phone. You need, you know. <laughs> and it's like, you know, everywhere they would offer something, you know. 
Um, so it was amazing. And again, you can see again the scenery here going through these valleys and greenery here um, as we're going through um, some of these green valleys in day nine. Um, and here actually it was, a, it was really nice as well too. Um, one of the stops, you can see there was a masjid there, but the masjid was basically, uh, you know, you know, just, you see it's basically the ground was dirt. And that's another amazing thing, subhanAllah. Um, you know, uh, some of the, I mean, I don't know, that was the best feeling in the world, just praying on the dirt. You know, and, and instead of just praying, you know, we had, when we first started, we all had our little prayer rugs, you know, the travel prayer rugs that you carry with you and everything. But subhanAllah, Imam Dawood and Hussain Abdullah, they're always like praying on, uh, on the ground. So you know what? We're here, you know, we're on the footsteps of the Prophet where where you walk, we're going to pray on the ground too. After we start praying on the ground, that was just an amazing feeling to just pray on the ground, you know, and just your head touching the bare ground. Because, you know, actually when I went to Mauritania as well too, um, their masjids, uh, like uh, a masjid, uh, <clears throat> one of the masjids I went to, it was a small masjid, uh, um, they had like this, uh, there's a stri strip, the kind of, and, uh, it was kind of like a rug, and it was like this, uh, it's not, it wasn't that wide, it was this wide. So I thought that's where you put your head. And they said, no, no, you don't put your head there, you put actually your feet on that. You put, you put your head on the ground, on the ground part. So a lot of these traditional places in time of the process, um, they, you know, their budget, initial budget, they paid on the ground. So that was also just amazing, just, just, just praying on the ground. Um, so again, so we actually had that masjid there. Again, we had, uh, we actually, uh, uh, we, we set up a tent there as well too. And, you know, we had our dinner there and everything was nice, mashallah, just, you know, praying there and eating there and just camping there. Um, so now again, we're getting really close, day 10, to Medina, and this was another amazing experience. Um, you can't really tell, but Man Mountain right there is, when you get closer, it's like, it's almost like a straight wall. So as we're getting closer to that mountain, it's like, you know, it's like, there's no other way. It's like, we gotta hike up that mountain? Okay, I guess so, and that's what the GPS is telling us as well too. We gotta go hike towards that mountain. Uh, so we get closer to that. Let me see, I don't think I have a videos here. No. Okay. So we actually start climbing that mountain now. Now this is day 11. Um, and again, these pictures really doesn't do, do it justice. Um, we got to a point as we're climbing on this mountain and uh, there's no trail anymore. It's, we're only following the GPS. Because here you, know, you hike, there's all of these trails. And, and then this mountain also, the rocks were kind of those um, rocks that kind of, when you touch it with your hand, it just turns into dirt. So it's like really slippery as well too, and you're hiking it up. I, you know, this is the, I think the first time I felt like, you know what, we might get really hurt here. Or I was really afraid that, you know, what am I gonna answer to my cousin's uh, family or something, if something happens to him or something, it's like, we're like, you know, smile and his family and whatever, because I would like, should we turn around? Because this is getting really dangerous. Um, but alhamdulillah, we kept on going because at least the GPS was telling us to go this way. And we went up the, this mountain. We climbed probably about over at least 2,500 feet uh, in this mountain. And that, that's another thing, this, this route. Most of it is, was flat. It was not a lot of like climbing and everything. This is the only section that you had about 2,500 of climbing. And also the first day when we went to Gharatur, uh, Mantar, that's, you know, that, that had about a couple thousand feet of climbing. And then this is the other part that had, like I said, over 2,500 uh, feet of climbing. Uh, and the worst part was, again, again, a lot of it, there wasn't any set trails and the trails weren't maintained or anything. So you weren't even sure if you're going the right path or not. So when we all got there, no one said anything, subhanAllah. We all went and did Turukat Nafal. Nobody said like, oh, let's go do Turukat Nafal. <laughs> we were just like so alhamdulillah that we made it up top of that mountain. <laughs> that we all made, you know, went and played Turukat Nafal. Uh, because I, like I said, that was uh, a little bit scary. But alhamdulillah, we, we made, made it uh, through that. Um, and then once we got through there, at the end of the day, uh, we actually camped about maybe 14, 15 miles away from Medina. 
so this is right here. That, that's our tent right here. Uh, we're praying there so that we can go then the next day we can walk into Medina. And again, there's some lava tracks there. So now, alhamdulillah, we arrive in Medina. And then one another amazing story was, subhanAllah, um, you see here, all of there is is some naan and some dal. And we see there was a bakery there just making some bread. And the bread looked really good. And it was like right after Fajr, we left. We got into the city of Medina. We didn't even have much breakfast, just some snacks and stuff. That bread again looked really good. So, you know what, let's just go buy one of these bread. And one of these bread was like 25 cents or something. So I went and got one bread. So, you know, we started eating that bread. And then um, they, they, they also had doll. I didn't smile or somebody said, you know what, um, would you maybe go get that doll too? That looked good too. As soon as he walks up to go get the doll, there's a guy standing behind us, the store owner, with doll. <laughs> he, he felt sorry for us. You know, it's like he saw us with backpacks and dirty and shovel, and he said, oh, maybe let me give him some charity, some doll, and, you know. Because <laughs> they all had was some bread, and we had some bread. And, you know, and that, that, that couple things with that. One is just a miracle that... How did he know that we want a doll? We got a doll, just we wanted a doll, and someone is just behind, standing behind us and giving us a doll as well too. And then second thing is just don't ever think your act of small act of charity is insignificant. Because that little doll that cost probably 25 cents, that tasted so good for us with that bread. That was like tasted better than the best kebabs you can buy here. <laughs> So it was, for us, it was amazing, you know. Um, so like I said, don't ever un un underestimate any charity that you do because you don't know what the impact of that is to the person that you give and to what you do. So that was like, again, like said, an amazing experience for us to just have that bread and that doll and uh, that in the morning right there. Um, so again, thank you, you know, this is like us getting just in the outskirts of Medina and you know, there's roads and stuff. And then this is uh, actually now we're getting really cl place, uh, close to Quba. I mean, smile, get, take a picture there. And then, alhamdulillah, we arrive in Quba. Uh, so, uh, you know, and um, this is day 12 and, and we arrived in Quba. And another amazing thing, subhanAllah, was like the whole trip, um, I did not have a blister. And then as soon as I get to Quba, I'm making wudu. And then I'm making wudu and washing my feet, and I see I have a blister in. <laughs> but the whole trip I didn't have blisters. But when I get there, so hard of I have a blister. So again, alhamdulillah, Allah helping us on this trip and just making it easy for us. Uh, so that's again the whole group, you know, taking picture in Medina. So alhamdulillah, arriving there. And then just one last, I think, picture I have I wanted to show was uh, amazing. Just. Um, again, learning from the Prophet ﷺ. This is a picture of the original masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. Again, you can see it was just um, dirt that they prayed on. Um, and in that back part right here, this is where Allah Sufa was. And that's kind of here, that kind of the front part. And most of it was, didn't even have covering. And then the other thing I just want to show this, um, I don't know what you guys think. Do you guys, anybody know what they, these are? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, which one do you think is for the wudu? A big one or a small one? Yeah, the smaller one. So, smaller. This is the amount of water that Prophet Sam used to make wudu. That's all the water that he used to make wudu. And then this one right here, this is for his ghusl. That's the amount of water he used to make ghusl. And subhanAllah, how much water do we waste? And taking showers and making wudu and everything. We just have the water just running and splashing all over it, just making wudu. Right? Let alone how much time we take in our showers. Uh, and the Prophet said, if you, even you're next to the river, don't waste water, right? Yeah, so just, that was just incredible to see, you know, what the Prophet uh, used to make wudu and ghusl. Um, so, alhamdulillah, like I said, it was an, an amazing experience. You know, and one thing, I don't want to, you know, put people down, but, you know, sometimes, you know, you always heard this story of, some of these scholars, they say is like, um, if they knew how I feel and what I get from practicing Islam in the spirituality, uh, kings would 
you know, like basically send armies to get the, the pleasure that I get from like the, the spirituality of, uh, you know, just practicing Islam and praying and all of that. And, and like I said, I don't, I, I, I don't want to go in a wrong way and, and I don't want to put anybody down in Sumhana, but when we got to Medina and Sumhana line, you see people staying in these four or five star hotels and going to Medina and Alhamdulillah, you know, like I said, I'm not want to put anybody down or anything, but the experience that we had and just going through these 12 days and walking the steps of the Prophet that was just an amazing ex spiritual experience that it's like, if, these pe if the people really knew how it feels and how it tasted just walking this route, I mean, people were paying 10 times more than these five-star hotels, the, you know, and yeah, I mean, that, I, I mean, like I said, I, I, that's all I can say is that just, it's an incredible feeling and that you've got to just experience yourself. And like I said, you would pay 10 times more than, um, you know, just going to Umbra and these, staying in these hotels and, you know, so, you know, then that's like, so again, that was like right, really my, our purpose being here is just to share that and we want more people to do this so that these routes and this route becomes more official that it is, you know, that it, we don't lose it because they've started construction, there's homes on the way, there's roads on the way. And if we don't do this, we're going to lose this. This is part of our history. Like I said, this is the most important route in human history and we're losing it. And we have to revive it and you know, and continue, to, you know, and start the sunnah, inshallah, that more people, um, you know, practice the sunnah, inshallah. So, alhamdulillah, jazakallah khair. I don't know if there's any questions. I think there's a mic here. as alaikum. Um, this is very inspiring, and yeah. it's beautiful. Um, just want to share a little bit about what I've been inspired so far. In the last few years, I think Ramadan, I've been hearing a lot of people going in groups to Umrah or Medina. Yeah. But this information is never shared or exposed to a small community. Yeah. So I'm very grateful and thankful for you sharing. I've had a desire to take my parents. And we're always wondering for elderly parents, like hotel is always the route we take. Yeah. Or do you guys have information about these groups and how to get about involved? So with yeah, that's another thing. It's like there is actually a group now that they started that they will take groups to this route. And another thing is also, you don't have to walk, because the whole entire route is 290 miles. We actually didn't walk the entire 290 miles because certain people, and I, we underestimated the time. We thought we could do it in 12 days, but actually you need about 15 days. Um, and um, so parts of the way we actually went by car. Um, so it depends on your group. I think what you do is that you set up a group of five and you, like I said, you don't have to walk the whole way. You can only walk five parts of the way. So if your group thinks, you know what, I can only walk five miles a day, you can, like, you, you contact this group. They'll take you where maybe you're only walking five miles a day and another 20 miles or 50 miles each day, you can go by car. Because the process I'm didn't walk the whole way, right? He took the camel. It's more the experience that you want, the experience that even if you do a little bit part of it, experience it. So yeah, there is this group that now that they will take people, and, and and based on your group, you can either walk five, ten miles a day, or you can walk twenty miles a day, or you can walk the whole route, two hundred ninety miles, depending on the amount of time you have. Uh, because I would say also it's you know especially for sisters, it's kind of hard because there's no like bathroom, so you have to go out in the open, you know. So that's will be one of the hardest thing if sisters are going, is that you're not going to have. Um, bathrooms every year, especially if you're camping. Um, and they, like I said, the government said they're, they're supposed to be doing some improvements. I don't know what improvements, but um, that's one way, like I said, yeah. So you can go with the group and you go with the amount that you can. Okay. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so the Prophet and uh, Peace be upon him and um, Abu Bakr. Bakr went there first. And then eventually the sisters, the two, right? Aisha Radin and others. Muslim ladies? Well, um, actually, the Prophet Sam and Abu Bakr were one of the last peoples that the, the Ijar, uh, that migrated. Uh, most, a lot of the Muslims actually migrated first. Most of the groups actually migrated. Yeah, then some of his family, yeah, then came later as well. Yeah, later. 
but majority of the Muslims actually migrated, as, I think as far as I know, first. And the Prophet was actually migrated, was one of the last people that migrated. But some of his family, like you said, yeah, migrated afterwards. And how did the sisters do it back then? Um, well, the thing, the, the thing was is that um, the Prophet he was basically being chased, right? So he could not take, go to a, like a normal caravan, right? Where, um, take the normal route. He had to hide, go for south and west. Um, so um, he had to take a different route. But normally, yeah, um, you know, the people travel in, in the past, uh, you know, with camels and caravans and things like that. But I think one of the sisters, I don't know, I don't know the name, I don't know, Smiley, if you know, uh, he went uh, or she went uh, without a camel and just walked, I think. So there's, people took different ways of getting there. Uh, and most would go with, obviously, with a caravan and camels and supplies and everything. But again, the Prophet was running away and at every second, like Abu Bakr, like, for example, when they were going on route, Abu Bakr would go like in the front of him, in back of him, and behind him. And the Prophet would say, what are you doing? Why are you going in front of me, in back of me, behind me? What he said is like, it's like when I see a section here that I think maybe somebody can be hiding with an arrow, I go in front of you so it doesn't hit you with an arrow. When I, when I see over here, maybe it can hit you from the behind, I go behind you. And I, you know, here, so it's like they're like actually like running away and being afraid that any time they can be hit. So their experience was totally different than every other person that went, which there wasn't a bounty behind them or in their head. It would be nice if they set up like a caravan for the sisters. Yeah, yeah, of, of course, yeah, inshallah. Like I said, um, that's why more people need to go that this route becomes more official, right? You know, like I said, even right now, most of the route, you know, it, there's no markers or anything. If you don't have GPS, it would just, you wouldn't even be able to know. A lot of people, even some people that live there, oh, I didn't know this was an easy route. I didn't know this, you know, because, you know, people just don't know. Where do you get the GPS location? Uh, this was from Sheikh Abdullah Qadi. He wrote this book. He documented the entire route for over like 15, 20 years. So he's got pictures of everything and GPS locations and the entire route. He walked it himself like 15, 20 times. So um, we got it from him. So uh, Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, I have uh, two questions actually. Yeah. First of all, uh, when did you guys uh, go on this trip? Like what month, what season? End of it? December and uh, first two weeks of January. Yeah. And do you know when our Prophet Sallallahu did the so, Hijri? What? In September. Yes, even in September. Okay, there's a brother there, so if you can just... Yeah, and I, I, you know, unfortunately, my memory is not very good. Imam Dawood mentioned the ayah, but again, <laughs> my memory is really bad, so I don't know what ayah that was. But it was at the Jaffa Miqat point. That's the ayah. I don't smile if you remember that ayah. I know, yeah, so, uh, I don't know if Qariyam or if you know, but, um, but uh, I, I, yeah, unfortunately, like I said, I'm not a scholar and my memory is really bad. <laughs> okay, so like, uh, like I said, it's, it's not the whole way, there, there's certain sections, it was like total desert, that desert that you see in the movies, right? Well, there's very little part of it was like that. Uh, most of it was very rocky. There's greenery, there's valleys, there's villages on the way that we passed by, yes. Uh, there's certain parts where there's just like, uh, just a couple tents where they were just keeping, a lot of parts, there was just a few tents that they were keeping camels. There was a lot of camel herds on the, on the way because like I said, there was a lot of greenery. So, you know, people were just herding their camels and animals and things like that all, along the way. So there's different, different, you know, scenery on the way. Yeah. Any other question? If not, then... Alhamdulillah, then, okay. I want to add something. Okay, yeah, right. I, I, I don't do cruise, but my son actually wanted to go, so hopefully, inshallah, if, if that works out, I might be taking my son. Uh, but like I said, there's a group, uh, they're actually, there's a company, it's basically, they take groups. So if anybody wants to go, I can introduce them to that group, and that group will take a group. You just get a group of five or six people, and they'll take you, inshallah. So they, you know. Okay, so um, the sister is saying, is, what recommendations do you have for preparing? Uh, so what we did is like me and Smile, like two months, two, three months before, we started hiking. Uh, we started hiking first like five, six miles a day. We get into 10 miles a day. And then in a few days, we did 
two mile, 20 mile highs, and we actually also, when we were hiking, we were hiking with backpacks, with the amount of weight that we thought we were gonna hike with. So that really helped me and him, alhamdulillah, so that we prepared at least two months ahead of time. We were hiking at least a couple times a week, uh, so that we kind of replicated, you know, and that really helped us. You know, one or two of the brothers didn't do that, they had a hard time. Yeah, Ismail, wanna say something? Okay, well, you wanted to say something. So yeah, one thing that um, I wish I knew before I went on this trip is to learn about the seerah of Rasulullah When you go there, you know, if you know the place, what happened, where, that will help a lot. Anybody wants to go, study on the seerah, know all the events that happened all the way. If I go again, inshallah, that's what I want to do. Because when you come back, you know, you know, it would have been much more, mm, I, I wouldn't say nicer, you know, it was very nice, but to know, Better. you know, to know, you know, what happened where. And uh, so listening to the Sira, following the Sira, studying on Sira, and there's a lot of, you know, uh, videos online that you know you can listen to, that, that will help a lot for anybody that wants to go, inshallah. Oh, I, have, okay. I have the mic, yeah, Bismillah. Yes. I just wanted to mention that um, you had mentioned the um, Sahabiyat that she made hijrah. Yeah. Uh, her name was Baraka Um Ayman, radiallahu anha, and her story is actually amazing because when she made hijrah by herself, yeah. <laughs> there, she has a miracle that um, a, a pail of water came down from the heavens, and um, as she was walking through the desert, subhanAllah, and she took from this water, and she said that after she drank this water, she never felt thirsty again. Wow. So she could fast, and she never felt the thirst. So it's a really amazing story. I just wanted to point no, that no, out. Her no. name's Um yeah. Amen um, Baraka. She was yeah. she was actually there at the Prophet Sallallahu birth, and was there throughout his entire life. So her story is amazing. Mashallah. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Now, Jazakallah for sharing that, sister. And that's the thing is like um, um, also. With this trip, I think it's also so important to have like a scholar or somebody with you that knows also, because that's for us also that was amazing to have Imam Dawood, that as we went, we can tell us stories and things like that, this happened here and that. That really just it amplifies the experience so much better. And you know, so. Okay, so then Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah Khair for coming and we really apologize for any of our shortcomings. Like I said, we're not public speakers or anything, so, but we just wanted to share our experience because uh, most important, we have to really um, revive this tradition and, and this sunnah and because and at least what we tasted, we want others to taste this as well too because it's amazing. It's amazing, the best trip of our lives really. So again, Jazakallah Khair for everybody coming.